So, oh, I think that's probably a bit high. Let's see if that's any better. Okay, welcome. It's Friday, it's two o'clock. It's time for Stamp and Chat. Um, I'm going to, as always, make the first thing I do, have a quick look at my iPad and see if I'm there. I'm hoping I am. Let's have a look. Okay, hmm, not yet. Does it just need to catch up maybe? That's not good. Oh, here we are. That's okay. Good, good, good. Just need to catch up. Oh, turn the volume down. Okay, hi Katie, hello Mary. Brilliant, right. Okay, right. I think we're here. I think there's a couple of other people watching if um, Facebook is to be believed, but I can't see who it is. Oh, Belinda, Belinda's one of them. Hi, Belinda, nice to have you. So I'm gonna start, as I seem to start every Friday, by putting some hand cream on. Oh, I don't know, my skin does not like being washed multiple times a day. And I keep a pot of hand cream on my crafting desk. Um, and, uh, and I just apply it all the time. And I always wash my hands before I come and do a live to make sure that I'm not putting dirty fingerprints on everything and then because everything seems to happen at the last minute <laughs> I never have time to put hand cream on okay Maureen's here hello Maureen lovely to have you um Mary's saying hello to everybody that's jolly good hi 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 oh it's been a lovely day here to, outside the sun is shining it's warm in my craft room I've actually put on a, a top rather than a jumper so that's got to be good hasn't it um <clears throat> So yeah, somebody said to me it's going to be a lovely weekend. I hope they're right. Um, I don't have any massive plans to do anything exciting, although on Monday, um, actually having lunch outdoors, fingers crossed. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't rain. Um, but yes, lunch outside with some friends that we haven't seen since, uh, just trying to think, October, I think it is. We were supposed to spend New Year's Eve with them, which we do every year. And of course, we all know what happened on New Year's Eve. Um, that wasn't possible. So uh, fingers crossed we're going to have lunch with them on Monday. So that would be really good. So tell me what you've been doing this week. Tell me what your plans are for the weekend. Uh, tell me if you've been crafting and what you've been making. Um, <clears throat> what else have I done this week? Um, I met up with my team on Wednesday afternoon, I think it was. I think it was Wednesday. Um, up out on the forest here obviously most of you know I live in the lovely new forest so um, we're very lucky we've got lots of outdoor space so a few of us met up there um, and uh, we, we took thermoses and we had cake and we had a really good chat and there was some fantastic show and tell we really enjoyed that people brought projects they'd been doing um, and it was lovely it did rain on us we retreated to our cars for about 20 minutes um, and then we stood around for a little bit longer and chatted um, and it was really, really nice to see people. But do you know, when I got home, I was so tired. Um, I chat to you online um, and I can't really see how that's any different to chatting to people in person. But it seems to be because if I meet somebody in chat, I'm absolutely shattered afterwards. I guess I'm just so unused to doing that. But it's so weird, isn't it? I don't know. OK, no other messages. Let me just refresh that in case anyone said anything fascinating. But do tell me what you've been up to. Um, what else has happened? Oh, my new stuff has arrived. You probably know that as a Stamping Up demonstrator, I'm allowed to order things from the new catalogue early and they've taken a while to get here. I actually ordered them very late at night on the 31st of March. And of course we had Easter happen. Um, and despite the fact that Easter is only two working days, it does seem to slow everything up by about a week. Um, and obviously, every demonstrator in Europe has been ordering early because they can and they want new stuff early. So I think there are a lot of parcels in the system, but mine has finally arrived. And if you can believe this, I haven't opened them yet. Honestly, I have not opened my parcels yet. I'm looking at them. Um, they're definitely going to get opened this weekend. Um, I had a class I desperately wanted to try and finish so that I could open and enjoy with a clear conscience. But that's uh, really exciting. I'm very, very pleased that's arrived. Gillian's just arrived too. Hi, Gillian. Lovely to have you here. So yes, yeah, so something that you may not know is um, if you join Stampin' Up, then 
what you do is you order some things which we call a starter kit but it's it used to be a set amount of things to kind of start you off um, now you can just choose what you like um, and it's brilliant value because you get 31 pounds worth for free um, and it's all things that you can choose but you can actually choose things from the new catalogue if you join um, in the month before the new catalogue launches. So in case you didn't know that, that's my little tidbit for today. That's my temptation to join, um, as well as all the other lovely benefits you get from being a demonstrator. Um, and then once you've got your starter kit, everything else you order after that is a discount, of course. Um, and you could have been there at our team social on Wednesday, eating cake out in the lovely new forest. So if you're interested, just contact me. Um, being a demonstrator is fabulous. I love it so much. Um, yes, I run a business, but you don't have to. Um, and you're welcome to join my team however you want to enjoy your crafting. Right, I've got some notices for today. I've got a bit of a list. Oh, a couple more comments. Um, oh, Belinda says she has definitely opened her parcel. Yes, Belinda is in my team, um, which is fantastic. She's opened her parcel. Sandy says, hi, everyone. Sandy's also in my team. So it's lovely to have you here, ladies. OK, so what else did I need to uh, tell you about? So all stamping up news. There's a new paper pumpkin kit. Um, some of you will know that paper pumpkin is a monthly subscription kit, which is available in North America. Um, and we don't have it in Europe every month, unfortunately, for all kinds of complicated reasons. Um, but every now and then there is one which is made available globally. And currently there is one called the Bouquet of Hope. And um, I've got my little fly here, which I'll hold up to show you a sample card in a sec. The idea of it is that you can make cards using the kit with uplifting messages on them to support the people you love through all those difficult times that life throws at us sometimes. The kit itself includes all the supplies you need to make nine cards with coordinating envelopes. Um, the colours are pastel shades as well as the more um, rich jewel tones. There is a stamp set in there and a uh, mini ink spot. And um, the only thing it doesn't have in it is a block. Uh, that keeps the price of the kit down. So you need to supply a block, which is a D block. Um, and it's available now, but only while stocks last. These often sell out. So if you would like one, I suggest you order soon. I'm just going to hold this flyer up. Oops, if I can avoid dropping it. Okay. I'll wait for my iPad to catch up and then I might have to move it. Uh, OK, I can't, still can't see. Gosh, there's a really... Oh, there we go. So you can see a little card there, a Thinking of You card with those pretty flowers on it. And there's um, a lovely layer on there with gold. Um, so that's just a sample of the cards that you can make. There are three designs and you can make three of each card. So if you want more information on that, you can just let me know. I'd be happy to help you with that. Um, Katie is loving the new stuff too. Hi Kay, nice to have you here. Um, Sandy can't wait. She's just got to wait for her parcel to arrive with her new goodies. Okay. Um, Fine Art Floral Sweet Sampler. That is my latest sweet sampler. And in a minute, when I turn the camera down, I'll show you what's in it. You can order that now. And that's going to be available until the 30th of this month. Um, and after that, I will order everything, divide it up, package it up and get it to you. Um, the sweet sampler is £11 if you can collect it from me and 13 if you'd like me to post it. But I will show you that in a minute. And next week's live is going to be the Fine Art Floral Suite. So I'll be making some projects uh, from that using some of the things that are in the sampler. So um, if you like the look of the sampler, you might want to have a good look at next week's live. Lorraine's joined. Hi, Lorraine. And Kay has said hello as well. So it's really nice to have you all here. Thank you for joining me. Um, today is the last day to book my card class by post. Uh, if you're not sure what that is, uh, you'll receive in the post six kits to make six different cards. I give you written instructions and um, photographs. I offer this class out with no reason to have to go online to do the class because not all my customers are online. Obviously, you ladies who are watching today are online and all my other classes have videos involved or a live class. Um, but this one is entirely by post. So if you've got friends that like crafting, but they're not online, do tell them about it. Um, and I would be happy to send them some information. But today is the very last day to book that. So if you haven't booked yet, then please do so. 
Um, what else? Ooh, the hay chick dies now a long, long time ago when the world was young. Um, no, not as long ago as that, but a little while ago, one of the celebration stamp sets was hay chick and we loved it and we cut out those chickens and we wished there were dyes and now there are dyes, but they're only available till May the 3rd. So if you've got the stamp set um, and you just like the dyes, or if you would like the chicken dies as well as the chicken stamps, you can get both of those, but only until the 3rd of May. Now in the current uh, January to June catalogue, there is a related set called Hey Birthday Chick. So the Hey Chick features the same chickens. The Hey Birthday Chick in the catalogue is, is, is those chickens doing birthday things. Um, but Hey Chick is a separate stamp set. Um, it works beautifully with Hey Birthday Chick. Um, and if you'd like the stamp set and all the dies, just bear in mind you've only got a couple of weeks left to get them. Uh, and what else? Last thing I wanted to say to you is a reminder that the annual catalogue is um, in its last couple of weeks again. That ends on May the 3rd. And we have a last chance list, which is all the things that have not made it through until uh, into the new annual catalogue. The new annual catalogue launches on the 4th of May. Um, if you don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator you work with and you would like a catalogue, please get in touch with me and I'll make sure I post one out to you. Um, I love online shopping. I really love online shopping, but somehow there is nothing like having a paper copy of the Stamping Up catalogue in your hand to help you make choices. Uh, it's just so much easier to see the details in there. So if you'd like one, let me know. Uh, all my regular customers and my regular class attendees, uh, you will be getting yours, so don't worry about that. Um, but the last chance list, these are the items that won't be carried over. So if there's anything on that list that you really love, you really need to get on and get it. A lot of the things have now sold out, but there are still plenty on there and there are still bargains to be had. Some of the things are discounted by up to 70%, which is huge. So have a look there. You can see all of that in my online shop which is sallybowman.stampinup.net. So you can find all that there quite easily. Um, and while you're there, have a look at the clearance rack as well. Uh, those are things which have discontinued a while ago and they've just got a few bits of them in the warehouse um, and they pop those on the clearance rack. So that's two places to look, the last chance list and the clearance rack if you like a bargain. Okay, so Rosie's saying that the new catalogue is fab. Indeed it is, Rosie. Um, and, and you're very welcome, Rosie. I'm glad you joined us. Thank you. And she's saying that she didn't even see the paper that we're using today. No, it's a really small picture, Rosie, isn't it? I'll show everybody where it is in a minute when I move that camera down. But yes, it's, there's so much in the catalogue. Sometimes it's easy to miss things. Right, I'm going to cover you over. I'm going to move the camera down onto my desk and then I'm going to show you the Fine Art Floral Suite sampler and then we'll do some crafting. So bear with me cover you over just so you don't feel seasick as I move you and I have a sneaky feeling I might have to do a little bit of fiddling around with this when I um, have got everything facing my desk okay let's see if I can just get it to give me the buttons I need so everything needs to be a mirror image and I need to be up the other way otherwise I will be upside down for you okay right transfer my microphone over to a new position and then hopefully I might be there oh let's get this cable out of the way as well you can't see any of this of course but uh, <laughs> I like to keep you in the loop okay I've got a really, really Heath Robinson arrangement here, honestly. Um, you can spend an absolute fortune on videoing kit, and maybe I will one day, but um, because the pandemic and lockdown and everything last year hit so quickly, I had to make do with what I had and then just buy a few bits until I saw what was going to work for me and what wasn't. So I have my microphone held onto my phone stand with a very large rubber band. And I've got my microphone cable held onto my phone stand with um, a grippy clippy thing. Sandy, thank you very much for that message. Could you please drop me an email? Because often these comments get lost when I go back and have a look at the, um, the videos. And 
Um, what I work for for my team meeting list is the emails. So thank you ever so much. Thank you for letting me know. And if you can just drop me a one line email, that would be brilliant because I know that comment won't that that email won't disappear. That will sit in my inbox and then that will prompt me to pop you on the list. But I'm very glad that you can make it. OK, so I promised you the fine art floral um, sweet sampler. Thanks, Sandy. That's brilliant. And I'm just going to show you in the catalogue where that is. Uh, it's on pages 32 to 34 if you want to have a proper look. So this is the January to June mini catalogue and this is the Fine Art Floral Suite. And across here are all the goodies and then the stamp set is over the page. So that's where to find it, the January and June mini catalogue the cover of which is this. So it features on the cover as well with some really beautiful samples of what you can do. And then I will show you what you will get in your sampler. So if you don't want to buy a whole pack of all the colours of card and a whole pack of the patterned paper and a whole reel of the ribbon and so on, then a sweet sampler can be a really useful way of getting your hands on some of those lovely things. So the colours are beautiful. The colours are quite bright and vibrant. Um, but depending on how much of each colour you use, they don't have to be really in your face. So your kit will include five whole A4 sheets of card um, in Bumblebee, Poppy Parade, Pool Party, Petal Pink and Flirty Flamingo. Um, which combine in lots of different ways and these coordinate with the patterned papers. Rosie's saying it's a gorgeous suite. Yeah, I agree with you, Rosie. I really think it is. And then you'll get a quarter of a pack of patterned paper. The paper is 12 by 12 normally, so you'll get six pieces which are 6 by 12. So if I'll just, I'll turn that sideways just so you can see. Um, so that's 6 inches by 12. So that's one side of one piece and that's the other. This is beautiful. You can just see the brush strokes in that. Then you want this one. So these are oil painted flowers, which have then been turned into patterned paper. And that's the back. And these are gorgeous, either as large pieces or cut down. They're just beautiful. So this one, which looks a bit strange sideways, it looks much better up the right way, but you won't see so much of it on your screen, unfortunately. So that's the way you would use it. Um, but I mean, you can see that, you know, if you cut this off, you've got a card front there, you've got a card front there, and then you've got another one at the bottom. So that's a really versatile piece of paper and a pale version on the back of those beautiful brush strokes. And then more flowers in more pastel colors. And that's the back of that one. And then this one, I love the colours on this. And the back. And then this one, you are going to get half a pack of the vellum, not vellum, sorry, acetate. So the acetate has gold patterns on it and two of the three patterns of acetate if you can see, line up with some of the patterned paper. So I will make sure I cut your paper so it, and your acetate so the two line up. I won't have one of them round the other way, if you see what I mean. So if I take that off and put them side by side. I've got my phone stand in the way. Let's see how we can work this. There we go. So you've got your paper and you've got your acetate. Now you can use them separately and they're beautiful or you can combine them and then you get what looks like a piece of paper but with gold highlights over the top. And then the last pattern of paper also has um, some acetate that coordinates with it. So this is what the paper looks like. This is another one that you can just cut to make card fronts if you wish. You can obviously cut it in lots of different ways as well. And that's the back of that one. Look at those colours. I love orange and pink together. And then your acetate that goes on top of this, again, looks as if 
someone has come across the painting with gold paint um, and it just it just outlines those flowers beautifully the back of all the acetate is silver so you can use it with the silver side you can use it with the gold side the gold side is the one that coordinates with the paper if I turn it with the silver side you can see that the patterns don't match because obviously this is now a mirror image um, but you can use it on its own it's absolutely lovely so that's two pieces of the acetate and the third pattern of acetate is this one so this coordinates with the suite with the papers um, but it's not one that matches directly with a paper and again it's silver on the back okay so Rosie yeah Rosie's saying that the, the acetate fits beautifully over the papers and you can make cards without too much effort yeah and real wow factor I agree Mary very sensible question Mary how do you stick acetate on paper there are various ways you can stick it on paper and those of you who are watching if you've got any favorite ways to attach acetate to paper let me know um, my favorite way is to let me lay this on a piece of card and it's perhaps easier to, to understand um, I would perhaps have a layer of acetate on my card and then I would have something here I'd have my focal point and where my focal point is going to cover over the acetate I would attach the acetate to my card using glue dots or tear and tape um, something like that and then my focal point would come in over the top and would hide the glue okay Sandy's saying you do it very carefully <laughs> that's right um, I've also done it with eyelets. If you've got eyelets in your stash, that will do it, or brads. Um, or you can put a glue dot in either corner of your, your panel of acetate and then put something like a rhinestone over the top to disguise it. So there are a few ways, if you're clever with your design, that you can attach the acetate quite easily. Um, you could attach it at the sides by punching holes and then threading ribbon through your card and your acetate. That would hold it in place. Um, so there's a few ideas there. So I've shown you the card, I've shown you the acetate, I've shown you the patterned paper. And the other things that you're going to get in your kit are uh, three pieces of coordinating card that I have used the, I think it's called Painted Textures embossing folder on, which is absolutely beautiful. If I tilt that, I'm hoping you can see the texture. It's just as if somebody has come in with a palette knife and matching paint and added it to your card so you've got a piece of that in pool party so that's a card front size a piece in flirty flamingo and a piece in white sandy loves the gold on top of the, the flirty flamingo it's gorgeous isn't it sandy so you get three layers of this ready embossed for you and if you love it then you know that you can order the embossing folder and you'll also get two meters of this beautiful ribbon which is like a natural I don't know if it's linen it feels like linen ribbon with a gold thread woven through it and if I lift it up I'm hoping that you'll be able to see it I'm waiting for my iPad to catch up so I can see if I'm in focus and if you can actually see it no let's move it a little bit that's better that's better I can't actually see into my camera from where it is so I'm hoping you can see that anyway that's out of focus isn't it Look, there we go gosh there's a really long lag today sometimes it's about five seconds today it's about a minute and a half I think so two meters of the ribbon as well so Rosie says to attach the acetate she uses Tombow really sparingly so the multi-purpose glue there we go don't smash it about I'm guessing putting it on with a sponge would be a good plan Rosie have you tried that so very very thin amounts of that you don't want lots and lots and Belinda's given a really good reminder thank you Belinda um, when this comes in the pack there is a plastic film on the silver side of the acetate I've actually taken it off this and my plan was to take it off when I send it to you um, so uh, you won't need to worry about that but if you buy a pack from the catalogue you will need to know that you can peel the the backing off and it's just to protect it <coughs> thank you so much for that reminder belinda that's brilliant okay so that is the fine art floral sweet sampler five sheets of a4 card 
six pieces of six by 12 patterned paper. That's all double sided. Three pieces of acetate and two of them coordinate with the paper. Three layers of embossed card and two meters of ribbon. So that's £11 if you can collect it from me. I'm in Lymington. Um, obviously, lots of you can't, and that's fine. I can post it to you, and with the postage, that will be an extra £2. So it's £13 posted. You've got until the 30th of the month, the end of April, to order it. And if you would like to, just get in touch with me. Drop me an email, um, uh, and I will get that organised for you. OK, I'm going to pop that back in the bag. Okay, so Rosie says she doesn't sponge on her glue on the back of the acetate, she just dots it on. And I'm guessing that you can dot it on behind where you've got a pattern. So she dots it on very sparingly. Thank you, Rosie. It's a good tip. Okay. All right, so today's topic then is card making with the Dandy Laser Cut Paper. Now, I'm on page 25 of the January to June catalogue. Um, and I'm in the Dandy Garden Suite. This is the one with the dandelions and the bees and the dragonflies. And I'm not really surprised when Rosie said that she hadn't noticed it in the catalogue. It's here, which is this very pale photograph. It's photographed on a sort of a, I don't know, an off-white background. And what they're showing you is off-white. It would be um, much better if they'd shown it on the, uh, some kind of <laughs> alternative coloured background. But I will show you the stuff, so don't worry. OK, so I'm going to pull it out. Sandy is saying she's got the fine art suite, floor, uh, fine art floral suite already. Um, but the sampler's a great deal. Yeah, it's it's basically it's the catalogue price. I've rounded it up to compensate for the time it takes me to cut everything and pack everything. But it's basically catalogue price. You just don't have to buy the larger quantities. And then if you decide you love it, then of course you can get more. Um, but I'm glad you think it's a good deal. Katie thinks it's gorgeous. Excellent. All right, so I'm going to pull in. So it comes in a pack with some hardboard to back it. And I've pushed all mine out of the backing to show you. And I'm just trying to find my little bag. I'm trying to take a shortcut there. And I couldn't. Right, there we are. So it comes in packaging like this. There are 22 pieces and it's been cut with a laser so it's very easy to just pop out of the background now this is the scrap that's left over which doesn't show you very much but i just wanted to show you the size of the the sheets that it comes in so you get two different sheets in the pack so that's the waste if you like now i haven't got all the pieces here because i've used some of them on cards but i will show you the cards in a minute so you will see everything by the end so you have some little pieces like this which will make um, either backgrounds or focal elements for cards and there are more of those but I'm going to be using some of them. So these are really pretty, they're so detailed. Something like that, um, it would be really tricky to die cut, it's lovely to have it ready done for you um, and this laser cutting can cut in brilliant detail. So you've got those pieces there, you've got a label. Um, lots of little tiny um, leaf and flower pieces. Now these all come in white, but I'm going to show you a few different ways to colour them. Rosie's saying they make great masks as well. It's funny you should say that, Rosie. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad you think the sample is a good deal, Kay. Brilliant. And then you get quite a few of these little butterflies, which again I have used. So those are my leftovers, if you like, and I'll show you what I made with the other things in a moment. But um, <clears throat> that gives you an idea. So there's a variety of background pieces. Um, you've got the label, you've got some leaves, you've got some flowers. And you've got some butterflies, uh, not butterflies, dragonflies is what I'm trying to say, which obviously coordinate with the stamps. They coordinate with the papers absolutely beautifully. OK, so I'm going to pop those back in my bag and then I'm going to start and show you just a few ideas for what you could do with these. 
Now there are so many things you can do with them. <clears throat> you can use them as masks as Rosie has mentioned and I'm going to be doing that. You can colour them. You can use them as they are. I'm going to be doing all those things and you can even turn them into metallic embellishments and I'll show you how to do that as well. Right, so let me put all of this out of the way. Rosie loves the, uh, not Rosie, Marjorie, sorry, loves the Fine Art Floral Suite too. I think everybody seems to love it, Marjorie, and it's just so beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to show you the first card I made and while I get my bits out, and I'm going to make a similar one, but it's not going to be the same, not going to be identical. push that up just a little bit hopefully you can see it better then pulling out my stamps and my bits and pieces okay so on this card this piece here is the die cut so it's a white ring and then you've got this beautiful detailing on one side um, and I've teamed it with the Dandy Garden paper. I've used the stamp set to stamp out a dragonfly and this saying may good things grow all year long is from the uh, dragonfly garden stamp set as well. So if you haven't seen it this is the stamp set. So I've used one of these dragonflies that's the sentiment I've used all of these will work with these beautiful laser cut pieces so really the sky is the limit thank you Rosie I'm glad you like it quite plain inside I'm going to use a similar die cut there are two of these little die cuts in the pack but I'm use, use, going to use some completely different colours just for a different look so I've got everything cut to size because there's never enough time on a Friday so I thought, well, I won't get my paper trimmer out. I'll just have everything ready. And I'll just lay this die cut on the piece of card for you so you can see. So that's the die cut piece. When you get it, it does come with the circle in the centre. So you've already got a circle that you can use for this or for something else. Um, I ended up, I wanted a blue circle in the centre. So I've got some cut circles instead to use there. But I'm going to start off with just a little bit of easy layering. So my card base is Calypso Coral. Ooh, and while I layer that, let me put this down as well. It's got a bit bent. I blue tack that down. Hang on. <laughs> I wrote out the measurements for you just in case. You can take a screenshot or you can jot them down. There we go. And I'll glue my blue card layer on. I'll leave the measurements there but I will probably cover them up now and then just like that. <laughs> so then I'm going to glue my first piece of patterned paper. So I've just put glue on the back and I'm using the blue stripes. And I cut a really narrow border on this so my paper is only an eighth of an inch smaller than the blue border. And on this one, I decided I would add a border to the other piece of paper as well because that stripy background is quite busy. So I'm going to layer these together. There we go. And then I'm just going to pop these together like that. Okay, hopefully you've had those measurements there for long enough. I'll move them out of the way now. If you need them back, pop me a comment and I'll, I'll put them back for you. Oh, 
All right, so here is my card. It's actually a bit of a, um, <laughs> a one for your eyes. If you have trouble seeing straight, this will really do for you because these stripes are not straight and vertical. <laughs> so <laughs> that looks like it's really on very wonky, but it, it is pretty straight. <laughs> it just looks like it's wonky. All right, so now I'm going to bring in this lovely little die cut, which will come on here. And I'm just going to carry on using my multi-purpose glue for this. Um, and I'm just going to apply a really fine line on that ring all the way around. And then just a little dot on the, the wider areas of all this lacy cut paper. And try and just keep a piece on kind of the, the outer tips of everything as well. Some of these areas are big enough that it's easy to dot a little bit of glue on. Um, so that's not hard to do, but it's also quite nice to make sure that it's stuck all the way around the edge. If you've got a fine tip glue pen, that would work beautifully for this. So that's the die cut. Then I've cut a couple of circles in coordinating colours. And I'm just going to add to the middle. Try and get that in the middle. The blue is Misty Moonlight. I'm not sure if I said that. It's Misty Moonlight and Calypso Coral with the white. And then I just need um, a couple of stamped elements. I'm going to stamp my words on one of these circles and then I'm going to stamp a dragonfly on here. So the words I've got are from Peaceful Moments. If you haven't got this in your stash, why not? <laughs> it's the most incredibly useful stamp set. It's always the right size. Uh, it's got all the key greetings on it. I love it. So I've got the happy birthday from that. And I've got Misty Moonlight ink. So I'll stamp, hopefully, in the centre of my circle and set that aside. While I've got the ink pad out, I'm going to stamp a dragonfly. Lorraine said it would be good if they did the laser cut paper as self-adhesive, wouldn't it, Lorraine? That would be really, really helpful. Um, I don't know if it's the process that means that they can't put glue on the back um, or whether it would just put the cost up or what it is, but it would be very, very easy for us if they did. Right, I've got the dragonfly punch here, so I'm just going to work from the back because that way I can tell when my dragonfly is perfectly lined up. Like that. So it punches two at a time. So I'll set that little white one aside for something else. And now I just need to stick these elements on my card. There we go. Now I'm actually going to put some Wink of Stella on the wings of my dragonfly. It needs a really good shake because all the mica particles settle down one end. So you need to give it a good shake so that they're well distributed in the fluid. And then I'm just going to brush it over the wings. Now because it's a water-based ink that I used for my stamping, and the Wink of Stella is also water-based. Um, you can find that the ink runs just a little bit on the stamping. Um, and as long as you know that it's going to do that, you can take advantage of it. So I'm actually quite happy to have the wings very, very pale blue. That works nicely, I think, as well as having the shimmer on them. And I'll pick this up under the camera so you can see it a little bit more closely. It's 
So I'm hoping that you can see those wings are very slightly pale blue. Um, and on the one that I already made, the wings are very slightly pale green because the ink has just washed across. And then I don't know if the light will pick up the sparkle, but it's got lovely sparkly wings. So I'm going to pop this on here. Um, the front of my dragonfly is up on one, two, three, four layers of card. So it's actually raised up and the bottom, the tail, is, um, is not resting on the card at all. So just to try and help it all sit fairly level, I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of dimensionals behind the, the body of the dragonfly. I'm just going to snip a narrow strip off the edge of a sheet of dimensionals. I could cut actual dimensionals up, but this is a little bit less fiddly. So I only want it on that tail part. That's too long. And then the front part of the dragonfly will just be glued flat. Doesn't need glue all over it, that will be plenty. There we go, now that dragonfly is sitting nicely because its, it's abdomen is supported by that little bit of dimensionals underneath it. So that's the front of my card. Uh, let's just stamp the insert, pop a dragonfly on that as well. And I'm just going to repeat the happy birthday, I think. And I'll glue that inside. Thank you, Belinda. I'm glad you like the card. There we are. So that's the one I've made. That's the one I made earlier. So the same but different. Using that beautiful laser color, uh, laser cut focal element. I do really like that. So there are two like this in the pack. drinking some of my tea. Right, I will leave you to look at those. I'm just going to clean my stamp and clear the decks a little bit. And then I'll show you something that's a little bit more of a technique. So Andriana says she hasn't used the set much at all and she really should. Yes, you definitely should, Andriana. <laughs> I have used it and used it and used it, actually. It's incredibly versatile. There is so much you can do with it. The stamps are beautiful, um, the papers are gorgeous. I don't know how many packs of paper I've used, about four or five, I think. Um, and that's without classes, that's just <laughs> just me doing things. Um, it's really lovely, um, there's a huge selection of colours. So yes, you definitely should be using it far more. <laughs> Make that your mission. Okay, I'm going to move these away now and I'll give you something different to look at. still got the sweet sample untouched oh well maybe I've inspired you Antriana maybe you'll get it out this weekend and have a bit of a play that needs to move up a bit doesn't it so what I'm going to do next is a bit of a two for one so the first card is is the first part and then um, I will then use a piece from this for the third card
So on this one, um, I've got two of those laser cut dragonflies swooping across my card. This piece here is what Rosie was talking about earlier, which is using the um, larger background pieces of laser cut paper as a mask. Um, and I'll show you how I do that. And then I've just finished the card with some layering and a sentiment and um, some ribbon and twine here. So this was a really beautiful uh, mask. You can see it's got these sort of seed heads and leaves. Um, and I'll show you the actual die cut piece that I used for the mask on the next card. So I'm going to do something similar but huh, different. Um, I'm going to use some greens. So this is my card base which is shaded spruce and I'm going to use this die cut piece which is just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I've got a layer of Just Jade. I'm going to use Just Jade ink as well and a piece of white. So let me put all of those aside for the moment. Okay, so I have here a piece of white card which is the same size as that laser cut piece. So if I put that down there, you can screenshot that if you want to know. So this piece of white card on here, I've called it the card for inking. So it's four and three quarters by three and a quarter inches. So those are the pieces I'm going to be working with first. And I'm going to use my Just Jade ink and I'm going to use one of the blending brushes. Thank you, Rosie. I'm glad you think it's a lovely card. That's brilliant. Now, these blending brushes, if you've been waiting for them, they are back in stock. Uh, there were a huge number of back orders for them and the remaining stock is in the warehouse. But if you want blending brushes, order them soon because they are on low stock. Um, and I'm sure they've got more coming in, but I don't know when. So if you want them, get them while you can would be my advice. I used them a while ago. In fact, I probably used them several times um, because I absolutely love them. I used to use pieces of stamping sponge for my ink blending, but now I just use the brushes and they're fabulous. So the first thing I'm going to do is to fix this down onto my desk. So I've got the laser cut exactly on top of the card. And you can use washi tape. I'm going to use some of this. This is frog tape, which my son got me onto. My son is um, in building and he recommended this. This is a low tack masking tape. And I'm just going to use it to stick everything down so it doesn't move. So this is one of those techniques that you need three hands for. So if you haven't got three hands, um, masking tape is the answer. And this won't destroy everything when you pull it up because it's strong, but it's low tack. There are probably other brands around, but this is the one that he mentioned to me. So this is the one I've got. I bought mine on eBay. I'm sure your local builders merchants will have it frog tape okay so there we go so that is now held down firmly on my desk and it's not going to move and what I'm going to do is apply ink all over the top of this laser cut piece using a blending brush and then when I remove the laser cut piece I will have the design showing as white with in my case green around it just as I did here and then the actual laser cut piece I will take away and use for something else in a moment all right I've just brought in a clear block there's no stamp on that but what I am going to do is um, just use it to make sure that the ink is evenly distributed in my blending brush before I go onto my project just by going round and round and round like this. I used to do that on my grid paper but it does save everything getting quite so inky. Uh, yes, ribbit ribbit Rosie, you're absolutely right. So I'm just going to come at this off the edge. I'm going to move my hand in the air. I'm not touching anything yet and then I'm going to slowly bring it down onto my work. 
and you can see already that's put some ink down now I'm being quite gentle and careful because these are just you know it's only paper it's not card although it's it's a heavyweight paper but it but it's paper and there's some very lacy areas here depending on your die cut um, you may want to be extra careful on this one this was actually trickier these pieces here you can see they're not joined to anything at the top these are actually loose on this long stem when you lay them down it's just like a flower stem so if you've got something like that I work from where it is attached to something more substantial so in fact it's attached at the side with that leaf and all the way down it's actually attached to the frame as well so I worked from the bottom up if I'd worked from the top down I would almost certainly have hooked up the edge of that piece of the die cut um, and I wouldn't have got that nice clean stenciled kind of line on it I hope that makes sense if it doesn't I'll try and explain it in a different way right so I'm just getting some more ink on my brush make sure it's distributed so I don't get any blots and I'll just come back so I'm just going to work systematically all the way across this And then when it's not putting down very much ink, I'll just get some more. Oh, thank you, Belinda. Belinda says what I said does make sense. <laughs> thank goodness for that. So here, actually, I've got a little loose dragonfly wing there. So working from the outside that way. So it's attached here. So I work from the attachment out towards the loose end is easier. If I work this way, I'm probably going to catch that and lift it which I obviously don't want to do, otherwise I will end up um, inking underneath it and I actually want all my ink to be over the top. Now I'm going to add some extra ink at the bottom and go for a bit of an ombre effect I think. And it just goes on so smoothly with these blending brushes. I don't know how many of you have got them in your stash, but if you haven't, honestly, you will not believe how fabulous they are. They're really easy to work with. Um, you don't need one for every colour. This is, I've put a sticker on it, this is my one for my light and mid greens. Um, I haven't washed mine yet, but I am told that you can wash them. And they just make creating inked backgrounds, sunsets, sunrises, all kinds of inky effects, just so easy. All right, so I think that looks pretty even. So I'm going to stop here, shut up my ink pad box so I don't lean on it. And then I'm going to very gently and carefully remove this tape and I'm going to peel it from the inside out I've got a little white border on my mask but I've got other plans for this mask anyway so that's fine I didn't try to make that little white border um, even on both sides because I'm going to do something else with this piece in a minute so I'm just holding the die cut so that it doesn't tear as I pull the tape off but this really is good tape. As I say, it's it's sticky, but um, it's not too sticky. And it does make it so much easier when you're doing this masking technique because you're not trying to hold your card and your mask together. Okay, are you ready for the big reveal? Here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> I love that moment. So that then is my inked piece and if I bring in the, the first card you can see now the similarities now this I could use that on its own exactly as it is I've now turned it from white into green which is lovely it's now just jade um, I could go over the edges if I didn't want that white border I know Belinda it is a bit of a wow moment isn't it I know it's it's so effective and it's so easy to do 
I'm glad you like that, ladies. So I'm going to set this piece aside. We'll come back to that shortly. And I'm now just going to make up my card. So I've got my shaded spruce card base. I'm going to add a Just Jade card layer to that. So I just wanted a kind of a tone on tone effect. I could have used something like silver foil. That would have been nice too. For a bit more kind of contrast and contrast and shine. And then I'm layering my inked piece onto some shaded spruce. And these are both quite bluey greens, so they work really nice together, just jade and shaded spruce. There we are. Right, so I now need a sentiment for this. So I'm using... Um, blossoms in bloom for this one actually those words are from art gallery so that's the stamps that coordinate with the, um, the sweet sampler I was just showing you but for this one I'm going to use blossoms in bloom um, I really really love the font that these are in and, and again such useful phrases there so I'm going to make a thank you card again I send ever such a lot of thank you cards so it's always good for me to have a couple of extras on hand um, and I've got shaded spruce ink now so the darker of the two colours I've been using and I'm just going to have to pull this it's probably completely out of shot now but I just need to get my head right over the top to try and stamp in the middle of my card there we are so I'm just going to trim this off Obviously I could put banner ends in this or I could use a punch, but I decided to just go very simple for this. And if I can find my other die cut pieces, I'm after a couple of those. I know they're here somewhere because I had them earlier, didn't I? Okay. <laughs> I haven't done this for a few weeks. Have I put something down and not been able to find it? There they are. Okay, I'm after these little die-cut dragonflies. I know I've got some of those left. Let's find them. There we go. Just one, I think, actually. That one I want. There we are. So this was a separate piece, but you can see that it's the same shape as the dragonflies on the mask. Um, if I open up the card and lay it down, they've got more of a contrast, you can see. So it's, it's the same as this dragonfly here. And if I wanted a stamped dragonfly, then this one is also the same. So... Um, the coordination is, is lovely right across the whole thing. So I'm going to paint this dragonfly with Wink of Stella for a little bit of shine. I could ink it with any colour I fancied. But I think just we'll go with just a little bit of sparkle. There we are. That does need a minute or two to dry. If I lay it on here. Mm, no idea if the, the camera and the light is going to kind of pick that up or not. But it is really sparkly, believe me. <laughs> Okay, I'm 
just going to rub away some of that damp sparkle. I'll put my sentiment on and then I'll pop my dragonfly on and hopefully he'll be dry enough for me to glue in place. Should have done him earlier and set him aside, shouldn't I? But I was so keen to get my blending brush out that I didn't. <laughs> So again, just a few little dots of glue. You could use your fine tip glue for this if you've got one of those, or you could even just add a few little dots of this glue with a cocktail stick. I do that sometimes. There we go. Now, not quite sure where I'm gonna pop this. there I think. There we go. So there we go, there's a lot of interest on that card but it's completely flat. I haven't even put ribbon on this one, I think I will put a couple of rhinestones, let's do that just for a bit more sparkle. Hmm, decisions, decisions. So I could put them on the dragonflies. I could just dot them around. I think I'm just gonna dot around. Thank you for the lovely comments everybody. So those are, are two cards both made in the same way but both very different. And this technique of inking through a mask, you can do it obviously with this beautiful laser cut uh, paper but you can also do it with um, any kind of lacy die cut you know, if you look at your dies, you'll often find that there are some there which, which do have lots of detail on them. And you can just die cut it, lay it down and, and ink over the top and through it. Uh, and you'll get something very similar. Right, so I'll clear these away as well. bring back my laser cut piece because I shall need that. So um, actually if I pull back, I'll bring back this one and then this is what I did with the piece that I used for the masking. So two totally different looks from the one piece of um, laser cut paper. So here I took my mask, um, I inked it with black ink, I've laid it over the top of some of the rainbow glimmer paper which I'll show you in a, in a big sheet in just a moment, it's absolutely lovely. Um, I added 
another dragonfly here and then I added a sentiment and, and some layers of card and that was it. So you've got the sparkle from the glimmer paper but it's not too in your face I think because you've got that added colour rather than it just being say silver um, or white you've got all those colours in there so I'm, I'm really pleased with that card I do love it. So now let's see what we're going to make with this piece. So first of all I'm going to colour this. I do love the, the jade but I'm going to make it black um, and I can colour it on that side or I can colour it on this side. I'll go with this side I think because then I haven't got to worry um, about uh, the black being a different intensity down here where I've got more green um, or on the edges I've got, I've got no green at all. So I'm going to work on the back. So I've got my stamping blends marker here. For this one, I used a blending brush and I used Memento Tuxedo Black ink. So you can use what you've got. I'm going to use the brush end of my stamping blend, which is dark basic black. And I'm just going to color the die cut. So I'm obviously not blending this ink at all. I'm just colouring everything. But it's a very quick way of doing it. I've got the marker on its side. So I'm not using it like this because I don't want to chew up the tip as it gets caught in these lacy bits of the die cut. And having it on its side will avoid that. And I'm using the broad end because I'm doing relatively large areas of card. If you've got the Stamping Right markers, those are the water-based markers, this will also work but you may find that you get, you know those pen lines you get when you colour with those? Um, so just be aware of that and you just you don't get that with the alcohol ink markers which is why I love them so much. takes a few minutes to do this but it doesn't really take that long. If you want a blacker black then you can go over it a second time. And obviously you don't have to choose black, you could choose any colour you fancy for this. So that is, I think, all of it done with no bits missed. Um, I'm going to go over it a second time just so it's a really black, black. Because I've got one layer on already, I won't have to be super fussy about getting absolutely everything perfect. I can be a little bit quicker and bolder. So if you are thinking about getting the laser cut paper, do remember you can make it any colour you like. It does not have to stay white. Oh, Gillian, I'm so pleased that I'm inspiring you to go and try things. Excellent. My job is done. <laughs> Sometimes you just need 
something to start you off don't you and then when you get it in front of you and you start you'll find that the ideas will absolutely flow there we go right so that now is ready that layer not very easy to see because you've got all the scribble underneath um let's pop it on something white for you to have a look a better look at there we are so i'm going to attach that to some glimmer paper now the rainbow glimmer paper is gorgeous oh sorry i've just hit the camera that's not good if you get seasick um, it comes in a 12 inch square sheet 12 by 12 and you've got this beautiful graduation of color right across they're absolutely lovely so when you use it you can die cut it or cut it with scissors or your trimmer and you can either pull out a section of one color if that's what you want for your work or you can cut strips or layers which are you know two or more colors and they just blend into each other seamlessly they're absolutely gorgeous so for this card i used a section like this Um, and for the one I'm going to do with the dragonflies, I've used a section from the, the other end. Okay, so Gillian said she's got other laser cut sheets. She's liking these ideas. Up until now, she's just looked at them and thought, how nice. <laughs> yes, use your stash, Gillian. Use your stash. <laughs> because when you've used your stash, you can buy more. And Belinda says she's got a dilemma. Does she go and play with her new stuff or does she go and try some of these things? Both of them are appealing. What a lovely dilemma to have. Absolutely, Belinda. What a good thing it's the weekend. <laughs> you could use existing stash on Saturday and new stuff on Sunday, couldn't you? All right. So I've got my layer of glimmer paper here. Um, I actually got a black piece to put underneath there we are just to really set off those colors and then i decided to go with the green color that was in the glimmer paper which is granny apple green this beautiful vivid green at the bottom um, and layer everything together like this there we are and then i'll pop a sentiment on it so very very easy um, you've got what looks like a detailed card well it is a detailed card but because somebody else has laser cut that beautiful design for you it's actually very easy to get a detailed card to come together quite quickly so all these little panels can be used um, as masks first of all and then you can use them on your cards with colors added to them or black in my case because I really do like that silhouette look but remember once it's stuck on your card you can't use it as a mask so use it as a mask first <laughs> all right so now I'm just going to glue this down so I'm just going to go all around that board with just a really fine line using the fine tip on the glue bottle and then put some across those solid dragonfly wings which will just help to hold it all over I'm actually going to turn that over once I'm sure it's not going to move and then I can really press down without catching any of those lacy bits there we are so that's got a very different mood to it with the greens and the purples I'm going to stamp a sentiment on this one I used um, a stamp and the die that which were the many messages stamps and dies um, on this one I'm just going to use a strip again and I'm going to use the thank you because I've already told you I need to send lots of thank you cards um, from Art Gallery. 
So this is the stamp set that coordinates with the sweet sampler I showed you. So these flowers are exactly the flowers that appear on the patterned paper. Um, but you've got these lovely sentiments in here in this really clear modern font. So I'm going to use my Memento ink pad to give me a nice black ink. And again, I'm probably moving this out of where you can see it just so I can get above it and make sure everything is central. So apologies for that. trimmed that. It needs a fraction more of this side I think. There we go. I'm going to pop some dimensionals on the back of this I think. Just pop it up. So that is my finished card. Drink some more of my cold tea just while you look at those. Thank you, Gillian. I'm very glad you like it. These are so easy to work with. Um, you know, I don't think you can make an ugly project, frankly, they're just beautiful. All right, so that's three, three ideas. I did just want to show you a third idea. I'm not going to complete a project with this because time is ticking on, but I will just show you how to use um, heat embossing with your die cuts. So let's move those out of the way just for a minute. And bring in, bring in these pieces. What should we do? Let's pick, let's do a leaf. That will be nice in gold. And I've left my heat tool the opposite side of my craft room. So bear with me. I'm just going to step over there and grab that. Clamber over my huge box of <laughs> new order things. <laughs> okay, it is effective, Marjorie, isn't it? It's you know, and yet it's it's so easy and simple to do. Okay, All right. I'm going to put put my light on. It's getting a little bit shadowy here. All right, so I've got my heat tool here. That's plugged in and ready to go. I'm just going to grab a little bit of scrap paper. Um, I've got my Versamark ink pad, so you'll remember, I'm sure, that this is a slow drying ink pad. This ink will stay wet long enough for me to get embossing powder onto my leaf. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover my die cut leaf, or laser cut leaf, I should say, with uh, Versamark ink, then I'm going to dip it into the embossing powder and then I'm going to heat it. So actually the easiest way to do this is to just drop it on there and press it down. And I've got some tweezers which I think are going to be useful. Okay, 
so I don't know if the light will catch that but that is pretty well covered with ink all over as are my fingers so I'm just going to wipe my fingers off one of my trusty baby wipes okay then I've got gold embossing powder here if you've noticed that the embossing powder is all on the last chance list in fact you won't even see it there because it's all sold out don't panic um, there is embossing powder in the new catalogue they've just put it into sets of three colours rather than buying a single colour so that's absolutely nothing to worry about there will be embossing powder in the new catalogue I'm just going to pick this up by the very end and then plonk it down in the embossing powder so you can see that that is sticking to it beautifully tap off the excess and now I'm just going to heat this I'm going to be very careful to keep my hand away from the business end of the heat tool and it's going to get noisy so my apologies for that can you see it beginning to go? Okay, so I now have a gold leaf now I rather like that kind of distressed look to it but you can see that it, the embossing powder isn't totally even all over it um, so to sort that out I can add some more ink and some more embossing powder so I could lay that leaf in there again or I could just dab it on so it, it doesn't really matter which way you do it now obviously the end of my stem which is where I was holding it with the tweezers does not have any embossing powder on it so I can either do that part afterwards or what I will probably do in this case just snip that little tiny bit of stem off it's so small that I'm not really going to notice that it's missing Ooh, I've missed a bit missed a bit there can you see <laughs> Let's try that again. No, it looks like I completely missed that with the um, ink pad, but that's okay. I can always come back to it. There we are. So now I've got a much more even gold finish on it. This bit here is a little bit thin. I just need to redo that little leaflet, um, which I will do quickly once I'm sure the powder is hard, which it is now. So it's just that, that one little leaflet that didn't get powder on it second time round. There we go. So that is how to turn a plain die cut into a gold die cut. Um, it's actually quite substantial now when you handle it because you've got the weight of the embossing powder on there and I could have picked silver or copper or white or black, whatever colours of embossing powder you've got in your stash. So that's another way to use the laser cut pieces. Um, I think that's really lovely, really sumptuous and it's completely different to if you had cut it from from foil. The finish of the embossing powder is, is different. So that is my final idea for you today. So I'm not going to make that up into anything because we're coming up towards half past three if you can believe it. So let me pull back all the cards just so you can see again what we've done. So I started off just using the, the laser cut pieces exactly as they came out of the pack. Then we used them as a mask and laid them down and then sponged or brushed ink over the top. 
and then these little ones I've just brushed with Wink of Stella just to give them a little bit of sparkle and then finally we used those pieces we'd used for masks changed the colour of them and then used them as an overlay in this case with glimmer paper and then finally I just showed you the idea of using embossing powder on this and Belinda is asking if it would work with gilding I'm sure it would Belinda yes I think so um, so you'd, you'd lay your Versamark ink down then you would sprinkle on instead of embossing powder you'd use heat and stick powder and heat that which would turn it into a sticky finish and then you'd lay your gilding flakes on top and, and brush off the excess yeah and you get a completely different kind of gold but I think it would be beautiful I'm sure it would work I'm glad you've enjoyed the ideas Mary thank you very much <coughs> oh excuse me I'm just going to cover you over and um, bring up the camera to say a proper goodbye to you turn off the extra settings Hopefully that's done it. I'll soon see. I'll wait for my iPad to catch up and then I will see if you can see me or if you can't see me. And there I am. Yes, okay. I've loved spending time with you again this afternoon. Thank you so much everybody for joining me. I'll be back at two o'clock next Friday um, and I will be looking at the Fine Art Floral Suite. So last minute reminders, um, if you want to book this month's card class, please book it by five o'clock um, <laughs> because after that um, I, I place the orders and I start cutting for the class next week. Um, it's been lovely to see you. Have a great weekend and I'll catch up with you again next Friday, if not before. Thanks very much. Bye bye.